AP Calculus first semester exam problems 1 through 5. My AB Calculus students completed their first semester exam a few days ago and I want to go over some of the problems from that exam. Here's problem 1 from the multiple choice section. If y equals quantity x cubed plus 1 squared, then dy dx equals and we have 5 answer choices a through e. In this problem we have a composition of functions. This would be like y equals x squared, except that quantity x cubed plus 1 takes the place of the x. We use the power rule in conjunction with the chain rule, so dy dx becomes 2 times quantity x cubed plus 1 to the first power times the derivative of the inside of the parentheses, which would be 3x squared. And simplifying, we have dy dx equals 6x squared times quantity x cubed plus 1. So we box in our correct answer and circle the corresponding answer choice, answer E. Problem 2. For x is greater than or equal to 0, the horizontal line y equals negative 4 is an asymptote for the graph of the function f, which the following statements must be true, and we have our answer choices A through E below. This problem is really a concept understanding problem, and that concept is the definition of a horizontal asymptote. The language does read horizontal asymptote in a slightly roundabout way, and the equation y equals negative 4 is that of a horizontal asymptote. Let's go down the list. Answer A has f of 0 equal to negative 4. The value of a function need not equal the value of the horizontal asymptote, and in fact, in most cases, the value of the function never equals the value of the horizontal asymptote, but approaches that value. So we can cross off answer A. And for answer choice B, it's really kind of the same thing as answer A. The horizontal asymptote is not the value of the function, but rather the value the function approaches as x approaches infinity, or negative infinity. So we'll cross this off as well. Answer C is really a nonsensical answer in that we're talking about an input value of negative 4, whereas a horizontal asymptote is related to an output value of negative 4. For answer D, we have the limit as x approaches negative 4, and that's nonsense too because of our initial condition in the text that x is greater than or equal to 0, so we cross off answer D as well. That brings us to our last remaining available answer E, and this is the formal definition of a horizontal asymptote. The horizontal asymptote is the limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity of the function, so we circle E as our correct answer. Problem 3. If y equals 2x plus 3 over 3x plus 2, then dy dx equals, and we have our five multiple choice answers a through e. This problem is written as a quotient of two functions, and for that we'll use the quotient rule. The derivative of u over v equals v times u prime minus u times v prime all over v squared. So in order to work this out, we'll need to get u prime and v prime. u prime is the derivative of 2x plus 3, which would be 2 and v prime is the derivative of 3x plus 2, which would be 3. And of course, u is 2x plus 3, and v is 3x plus 2. So putting the elements in place for the quotient rule, we get y prime equals quantity 3x plus 2 times 2 minus quantity 2x plus 3 times 3 over quantity 3x plus 2 squared. Next, we apply the distributive property of algebra and multiply each term inside parentheses by the number outside parentheses and using that property, we have y prime equals 6x plus 4 minus 6x minus 9. 6x minus 6x canceled equals 0 in the numerator, and that leaves us with 4 minus 9 equals 0 in the numerator, which is negative 5 in the numerator. So we box in our answer and circle the correct multiple choice option, D. Problem 4. The limit as x approaches infinity of x cubed minus 2x squared plus 2x minus 4 over 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals, and we have five answer choices lettered A through E. Like problem 2, this one involves the definition of a horizontal asymptote, which is the limit of a function as its input value approaches infinity or negative infinity. There's a series of acronyms some students use to help remember what to do. The one that applies here is what we call in our class BETC, B-E-T-C, meaning bottom equals top, and use coefficients. We say bottom equals top because the highest powered term in the numerator, x cubed, has the same power as the highest powered term in the denominator, which is 4x cubed. 
So that's 1x cubed over 4x cubed, which equals 1 fourth. So we box in 1 fourth and, and uh, we circle our correct multiple choice answer, answer C. I've also seen this problem done by replacing the x's with infinity signs. Compared to all the infinities, the minus 4 in the numerator and the minus 1 in the denominator are insignificant, so we cross them off. And compared to the infinities cubed and infinity squared, the infinities to the first power are insignificant, so we cross them off as well. And compared to the infinities cubed, the infinity squared are insignificant, so we cross them off as well. And finally, infinity cubed over uh, 4 infinity, infinity cubed over infinity cubed cancel to equal 1, so we're left with 1 over 4, 1 fourth. Problem 5. If f of x equals the natural logarithm of quantity x plus 4 plus e to the power of negative 4x, then f prime of 0 is, and we have our five answer choices a through e. Being a differentiation of natural logarithm, it helps to know the rule of that differentiation, and it is this. The derivative of a natural log of an expression is equal to the derivative of that expression over that expression. It's shown here is the derivative of the natural log of u equals u prime over u. Now according to this rule, we have u equal to x plus 4 plus e to the power of negative 4x. And u prime equals 1 plus negative 4 times e to the negative 4x, which we can rewrite as u prime equals 1 minus 4e to the power of negative 4x. And applying the differentiation with everything in its proper place, we have f prime of x equals 1 minus 4e to the power of negative 4x over x plus 4 plus e to the power of negative 4x. Now we can find f prime of 0 by substituting 0 for every x in the function. So we have f prime of 0 equals 1 minus 4e to the power of negative 4 times 0 over 0 plus 4 plus e to the negative 4 times 0. In simplifying, e to the power of negative 4 times 0 becomes e to the 0 power, which simplifies to 1. And so f prime of 0 is 1 minus 4 over 4 plus 1, which further simplifies to f prime of 0 equals negative 3 over 5 or negative 3 fifths. So with that, we box in our answer and pick our circle our correct answer choice A. With this last problem, I conclude this video presentation. In a test that was overall not that easy, these first five problems were pretty simple problems. If you got these first five problems correct, you set yourself up well for a good overall score on the test. I will put together at least one more video addressing some uh, from the calculator portion of the exam. This has been AP Calculus First Semester Exam Problems 1 through 5. Thanks for viewing.